and welcome to the den. My name is Eric and it's Friday. This week on the den we're doing top 10 lists and I was racking my brain about what could I do a top 10 list about that wasn't already covered. We did a lot of movies this week. Um, I did movies the last time, so I'm doing books this time around, and this is Top 10 Books That Blew My Mind. First up is The Great and Secret Show by Clive Barker. This book is absolutely amazing, and it's one of the first books that kind of turned me on to transcendental fiction, you know, we'll call it. Um, the story follows uh, Robert Jaff, I believe his name is Robert Jaff, and uh, uh, he is a guy who's kind of seeking some kind of way to break out of mundane existence. He starts out as like a postal clerk, like opening dead letters in Omaha, Nebraska, and he eventually turns into a demigod. Um, and he's totally fucking evil, but he has a counterpart, uh, Fletcher, uh, who was his like science buddy in this whole thing, and it's this amazing interweaving of like magic and science and dreams and it's incredibly epic and crazy so i highly highly recommend checking out the great and secret show by clive barker next up we have season of mists by neil gaiman uh season of mists is the fourth novel in the sandman graphic novel series uh and it is probably the comic book that turned me on to comic books as a form in this story uh the devil himself, Lucifer, the king of all of hell, decides that he is fucking done with it. And he decides to turn over the kingdom of hell to Morpheus, the lord of dreams. And uh, it's Morpheus's responsibility to take this key to the gates of hell uh, and to bestow it upon the next rightful heir to basically the throne. <laughs> and what follows is this incredible incredible epic story of uh, demons and gods and all of these things coming out of the woodwork and all of them want to reign in hell. And uh, it's just an amazing story and it's got some really awesome graphics and Neil Gaiman is the man, so totally you should check out Season of Mists. And while we're on comic books, let's talk about The Watchmen. Alan Moore is the best comic book writer that has ever existed. Um, Watchmen, if you saw the movie, you can wipe it from your mind. <laughs> Read the book, because this is the most eye-opening, crazy look at superheroes that has ever been done, and what he does is he basically breaks down like all their psychological crazy, crazy flaws and just dissects everything about what makes someone want to be like a Batman. Or, uh, you know, what are people's motivations for doing this kind of crazy superhero work? So, um, it's really awesome, and the ending is completely different than the movie. I think that the way that this is set up in the book is way, 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 way better, and it'll totally blow your mind. Valus by Philip K. Dick is probably the only Philip K. Dick book that they have not turned into a movie, because it's kind of impossible to turn into a movie. It's a weird, sprawling, crazy exploration of pink lasers from space and uh, Jesus and time travel, but it's not really time travel, it's kind of like we've all been stuck in a time loop forever, and it's really super weird. I highly recommend it. Valus by Philip K. Dick. Also in the crazy science fiction genre, The Stars My Destination by Alfred Buster. Um, this is a book about teleportation. Teleportation through your mind. <laughs> Using the very power of your own mind, people have developed teleportation technologies, but in order to use it, you have to know where you're going until someone breaks it. And it is awesome. You should totally read it. The Star is My Destination. And I actually read a weird article about The Star is My Destination and uh, in conjunction with a novel by Tim Powers called The Stress of Her Regard, because both of them have this very central location in Italy 
uh, the Spanish steps. And uh, it, it was really interesting because I read both of these books like back to back and I didn't know that that was going to be a thing. And it was a thing and it was like, whoa. So this is on the blow my mind category for multiple reasons. Labyrinths by Jorge Luis Borges is a collection of short stories that explores strange transcendental experiences. Um, in this book, uh, you have, there are two really interesting stories. Um, the one of which that is like the one that resonates with me the most is the Library of Babel. Um, the Library of Babel is an infinite space. All books, all words that ever can be or could be contained are in the Library of Babel. And everything that is, can, or should be is all in there, and no one can really explain it. And it's full of these strange interlocking corridors of books, and it's hexagonal for some reason. Totally, totally read this. It's a really fast read, actually. I read it in a, a read-aloud uh, Halloween storytime session, The Library of Babel. It's embedded in this really awesome series of crazy, mind-blowing stories by uh, Jorge Luis Borges called Labyrinths. Foucault's Pendulum by Umberto Eco, I read at an age that I didn't really fully understand everything that took place in this book, and then I read it much, much later after having read a lot of really explanatory um, occult material, shall we say, <laughs> and it made a hell of a lot more sense. So Foucault's Pendulum is the story of this guy who develops this uh, novel writing engine, basically, um, but he uses, like, Kabbalistic uh, principles to try to generate random conspiracies, out of conspiracy theories out of the machine. And uh, one of the conspiracy theories that it prints out, it turns out, is in fact actually true. And uh, like the Illuminati and like all kinds of crazy shit starts going down and it all kind of winds up in Paris uh, in the Pantheon and uh, it's all kind of tied into uh, the actual pendulum that uh, Foucault uh, hung from the Pantheon, and uh, it's it's super, super cool. Um, it's kind of a slog to get through, as some of these books are, um, but the payoff in the end is fantastic. Umberto Eco, Foucault's Pendulum. Speaking of books that are kind of a slog to get through, but are completely worth the payoff in the end, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, uh, by Susanna Clark. Uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell is actually being adapted into a BBC miniseries right now, and I am so stoked! So this is a story of these two magicians. They are actual wizards. Uh, well, one is a wizard, one is more of a sorcerer. He's kind of doing it on the fly. Uh, Mr. Norell is, like, uh, a scholar of, uh, magical literature, and he... Uh, basically runs all the other magicians out of town, because he finally, like, decides that he's gonna up and just use magic, whereas everyone else has been, like, kind of a magic historian, uh, and, uh, he uses it to defeat the Napoleonic army, uh, in the name of Britain. So, that's awesome, and then he teams up with Jonathan Strange, and Jonathan Strange is this, like, you know, hedge magic user guy wandering around in the woods, uh, who just kind of happens to run into Mr. Norrell one day, and they hit it off, and they form this kind of whiz-bang magical partnership, and there's fairies, and the fairies are evil as fuck, and it is awesome, and the things that go down in this book are so cool. And when you get to the end of this book, you'll be like, holy crap, that was amazing. Uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. So the last two books I have on my list are nonfiction titles. This is Understanding Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot uh, by Lon Milo Duquette. Um, in order to kind of understand Umberto Eco and Foucault's Pendulum and all of the crazy shit that's going on in that, uh, you have to understand the Kabbalah. In order to understand Kabbalah and the Thoth Tarot and all of the interweavings of all the crazy little mystical symbols that are in there, you need this book. I read the first, like, section of this book, which is this whole big prologue of, like, all the, breaking down all the little mystical systems that are all the pieces that are embedded into each of the tarot cards in the system, and it was just, like, a revelation to me. I've read tarot for, like, 15, 20 years now, and I 
cannot begin to stress how valuable this book was in helping me understand the nuances and the details that are in these systems. So, uh, understanding Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot. And just in case I spent too much time on fantasy and science fiction, I'm giving you mathematics. This is The Mystery of the Aleph by Amir Axel, and it is a biography, actually. It is a real-life story of a mathematician. His name is George Cantor. He's a German mathematician and a Jew, and he developed set theory. And one of the things that came out of set theory was uh, transcendental numbers. Numbers that are not just infinite, like pi, but numbers that go on exponentially infinitely, uh, that go on and on and on and on and on and on in, like, multiple spheres. It's not like they even exist in the same plane of numbers as real numbers. It's pi, even though it's irrational, is still somewhere in a, in a line. Uh, but the Aleph, uh, the uh, beginning of the transcendental numbers, is its own weird, unique beast. So um, I read this book in one sitting in a bookstore because it was so engrossing and so weird. And the way that mathematics and spirituality play in this novel, it's not, it's not even a novel, it play in this biography, is just out of control awesome. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed my video this week. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. You can go down into the YouTube section and uh, when you're in YouTube and go down into the button and click the big red subscribe button. It's right there. Um, if you have any questions about any of these books, go down to the crotch. I will put links to all of these books so that you can find them at your local library through WorldCat. And I will see you all next week. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs>